Hey there, and welcome to A Well-Rounded Life, the podcast, a space for creative entrepreneurs seeking an intentional life and biz filled with grace, passion, and purpose. I'm your host, Jamira. I'm a mama, wife, dessert fanatic, and on the ultimate mission to get you closer to your idea of what it means to live a well-rounded life. Right here is where you'll find curated resources, quick tips, and relatable stories, no matter what season of life you're in. So hang out with me for a bit and let's dive in. Hi, friends. Welcome back to the show. Jamira here. If you're tuned in, take a screenshot. Screenshot and tag me over on Instagram at coach for creatives or on Facebook, coaching for creatives. And I would love to know who is out there listening, who's tuned in so that we can show you our love and appreciation right back. I'm excited to have a guest joining me today by the name of Haley Luckadoo. I just love her last name, by the way. Haley is a multifaceted entrepreneur, educator, and fellow podcaster. In fact, I was a guest on her podcast, Females on Fire, earlier this year. So go to wherever you listen to podcasts, search for Females on Fire podcast, and check out episode 55. I'm in the guest chair talking all things well-rounded. And my chat today with Haley is guaranteed to resonate with many of you out there. Question for you, have you ever, or are you currently in a situation where you have no idea how things will turn out in your favor? Haley has been exactly where you are and she's sharing with us how she was able to take a really devastating situation and use it to be the catalyst to building her business empire. Listen in as she shares her story and how you can turn lemons into lemonade. But before we dive into the interview, today's show is sponsored by my spanking new course, Systems for Your Sanity. The course has been asked for over and over again by busy mamas and bosses that are ready to reclaim their time. It's been crazy, super crazy with everything that we are facing right now in this season. And so people ask me all the time how they can implement systems in their home. And so guess what, guys? I've got you covered. You're going to have access to my tried and true resources, tips, insights, and all the things that will help you get your time back so that you can spend it doing the things you love with the people you love. Also, as we are back into the swing of things, I want to remind you that you can support our show by taking just 30 seconds, literally guys, just 30 seconds to leave us a five-star rating and a quick review in Apple Podcasts. The link to do so is in the show notes and you can also do so by going to a wellroundedlifepodcast.com and give us that rating and review because it definitely helps us serve you much better. All right. Before I bring Haley to the mic, I want to read you her official bio. So Haley is a money and marketing coach and motivational speaker who empowers entrepreneurs to let go of the things holding them back and take the steps toward bigger dreams and a better life. She is an audacious dreamer who started with a hobby wedding planning business born out of her college apartment and turned it into a serial entrepreneur success story fueled by determination and Dr. Pepper. Through her company, Luckadoo Media, and her passion project, the Females on Fire podcast, Haley spends most days in her very pink office creating content and resources to educate and motivate entrepreneurs to change their lives by taking risks, dreaming big, and stepping into action in their full potential. Let's welcome Haley to the show. Hi, Haley. Welcome to the show. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. Me too. How are you? I'm good. I'm doing really good. How are you? (laughs) I'm good. I love, I just love your energy. Always so positive. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. I try. (laughs) Yes. So I read your bio at the top of the show, but just introduce yourself a little bit to our well-rounders. Yeah. So I'm Haley Luckadoo. I'm a money and marketing coach and the founder of Luckadoo Media. That's my company. And originally was actually a wedding planner. So I have a whole crazy story of how I got into (laughs) entrepreneurship and, uh, but it's transitioned over the years and I've been in business for about six years now and just absolutely love getting to do this life. Yeah. So she's a fellow wedding planner like myself. So we have a lot of things in common uh, there because you started off as a wedding planner and then shifted into the coaching space. And so, um, as you said, we'll dive into that a little bit. 
Yeah. So Haley, you are currently a money and marketing uh, coach. So tell us a bit about your journey and how it led you into just wedding planning in the beginning, entrepreneurship and, and all the things. Yeah. So like I said, whole crazy story. Uh, so I'll try to keep it fairly short, but I love to share the good stuff. Um, basically, I had never planned on running my own business. That was not a thing I ever thought I'd do. Looking back now, I feel like I always kind of had that entrepreneur gene in me. Like I just, I was really creative and I constantly was, my mom called it bossy. I just call it being a leader, <laughs> you know, like, but I just, I've had that thing where I just wanted to create things and I wanted to help people and uh, just kind of always wanted to do my own thing and felt like I was definitely in my own lane a lot of the time. Um, but I went into college and changed my major like nine times. I was so super passionate about a lot of different things and I wanted oh, wow. to find a way to do them all, but settled on criminal justice. I was going to be a lawyer and I worked with a lot of like domestic violence victims. And that was just something that I was really passionate about and was really on my heart. And going into my senior year of college, I was engaged to a guy I had been with for like six years. We were high school sweethearts. I thought life was great. I had one year to go, was going to get my degree, have this amazing job, wonderful husband. It was going to be awesome. And a month before our wedding, he basically decided that he just didn't really want this anymore and uh, broke up with me pretty much through a text message. And I was just like, wedding's oh off. I don't want to date you. I'm, I'm just done. And he left. And within that same week, I got a letter from my school saying, Hey, you know, we know that you're a full financial aid student. And so financial aid is how you're going to school, but guess what? We've got your financial aid. So oh my God. And, uh, pay us all the money that you don't have or not come back to school. Oh so my God. within a week I lost everything, the husband, the job, the degree, everything I thought made up my whole future. Oh my gosh. It's crazy. So crazy. But, um, after spending a while wallowing in it and doing all the crying and, you know, just letting myself fall apart, I told myself, you know, I, I can't go get another job waiting tables or working in a retail store as a cat. Like that's fine for some people and there's nothing wrong with that, but I just can't do it. Like that's, that's not what I want my life to be, mm -hmm. but I got to pay the bills. And the only skill I felt like I really had was that I had just planned my own wedding, even though right. it didn't happen. I planned it <laughs> and I knew how to do that. And I had a lot of friends that were getting married and I was like, okay, I'm just going to get my friends to pay me a little bit of money. I'm going to plan their weddings for them. And I'm going to do that until I figure out what my next move is going to be. Hmm. And I never intended to fall in love with wedding planning, fall in love with business. I never even intended for it to become a business. I was just like, I'm just going to help my friends and make a little money. That's fine. And it went really, really well. And everybody loved working with me. They referred me to other friends. It turned into a whole thing. And within a couple of months, I sat down and realized I was like, oh my gosh, I'm running a business. I should probably learn how to do that. <laughs> and just started Googling like crazy. Like, how do you run a business? How do you run a wedding planning business? How do you start a company, build a website, do all these things. And, uh, looking back, I, I wish I had pictures of my first website. Cause it was so, <laughs> so terrible. I built it myself on like Wix or something. I don't know. It was awful, but I had this business. And so I just, like I said, Googled my heart out and taught myself everything I could. And found people to look up to and follow and went to conferences and listened to podcasts and did everything I could do to learn how to run a business and just really fell in love with business. Not even so much wedding planning, just business. Mm -hmm. And uh, that eventually led me to open a second company about three years in uh, doing like virtual assistant work. And that kind of transitioned into digital marketing and coaching and um, eventually grew to the point where I was like, okay, something's got to give. Um, I don't have time to run both companies anymore with the way that they're both going because they were going really well. And I said, okay, what, what am I least passionate about? What, what's not really filling me up anymore? And, and that was wedding planning because I had just fallen so in love with business that it wasn't actually the act of planning weddings anymore that was 
was really making me happy. So we quit planning weddings uh, at the end of 2018. And since then have just been focusing on scaling Luckadoo Media and started doing coaching and I started speaking and just fell in love with that and uh, my podcasts and all of these different little facets of my business that we do. And looking back now, I'm like, oh, hey, there's that multi-passionate thing that I had as a kid and in college. And it's really come to fruition in this business and it's showing up in such a, a cool way. But it all started out of something that kind of was terrible. And now I'm so thankful for it. And I'm like, this is, it's, it's a wild, crazy ride. And I can't imagine it will ever get crazier, but who knows? And I I love it. I love every second of it. Oh my gosh. Well, the crazy thing is we all have different ways in how we got to being creatives, entrepreneurs, business owners, and all of that. And so I just love how you were able to take that situation and turn it into a positive. And it was clear that you hustled your butt off. You did the research, you invested in in conferences, you invested in mentors and all the things so that you could be the best of the best if you were going to do it. Right. I, well, I just, number one, I'm going back to the breaking up over text message thing. I'm (laughs) like, we got a whole wedding plan and you want to break up with me over a text message. Like <laughs> I just, Oh my gosh, girl. I yeah. just can't imagine that. But the fact that you're you know, smiling and standing and thriving is just a blessing in itself, you know, wow. after all of those things. Absolutely. He was a keeper. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> well, so somebody else, cause you, you doing pretty well for yourself in, in all the areas. So he can, he, I'm sure he's, well off with someone else but you got your prince charming so we will take it from there exactly exactly (laughs) plus you got a really cool fun last name so we'll we'll take that too i do i do thank you (laughs) you got another another win there so Haley, after all that you have gone through how are and you know are you able to stay positive when for a lot of people that would have broken them all the way down So how can you, how do you stay positive? How were you able to stay positive in that season? So as far as that particular season goes, I don't know that I really was. Mm -hmm. I know that's like not the answer people want to hear because they want like the advice on how to stay positive when bad things are happening. But let's be real, bad things are happening. Like who wants to be positive when bad things are happening? So for me, I think it's kind of two things. Number one, I got a little bit lucky. Um, because I, I did meet my, well, I sort of met my, I re-met my husband. We knew each other in high school, but I met my now husband during that whole sort of period of time where I should have been really upset. I should have been sort of wallowing in it. And so that was just kind of a, a lucky thing that happened to me that really helped me kind of take my mind off of it. And, um, you know, I just sort of fell for him very quickly. Um, but as far as what I did that might be helpful to other people, and this is the other thing that I think really benefited me is I just knew that this wasn't the life that I wanted. Mm. I didn't want to be the girl who was crying over the guy, you know? And so, and I, I think anything that happens in our lives, you've got to force yourself to look in the mirror and ask yourself, okay. I've got two options here. I can sit here and I can wallow in it and I can cry and I can be upset and I can sit on the couch and watch Netflix and never do anything again. And all of that is, is understood. Like it, you're allowed to do that. Nobody is really going to judge you for doing that because it's okay. Like something bad happened and you've got the right to do that. But is that really the person that you want to be? Is that really the person that you want to be a couple months from now or a couple weeks from now or even a year from now? And for me, that answer was no, that's not who I wanted to be. I didn't want my parents to have to help me keep the lights on in my apartment because I was sitting on the couch and wouldn't get a job. I didn't want to have all of my friends ask me to go out and be like, oh, well, we're just going to stop asking Haley because she's going through something right now. I didn't want to be that person. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it was just, I got to do something. And I always kind of uh, go back to in the moment that I was wallowing, I remember watching 
Gilmore Girls was one of my favorite TV shows growing up and I've binged it like a million times. <laughs> and um, I was watching the show again because it's just sort of my go-to when I'm like sad or bored or whatever. And the main, one of the main characters in this episode, she said something that has stuck with me literally for six years. She said, a setback is just a set up for future accomplishment. Amen. And I remember just sitting there like that was the, I feel like that was the moment where I was like, I got to get up off this couch. Like, you know, like it was just like, okay, yeah, this bad thing happened, but what if this bad thing doesn't have to be the end of it? What if this bad thing is the building block for the next thing? What if this bad thing is something that I can now use to help somebody else? And the longer that time went on, the more I realized that this was the thing that made me. It was, you know, literally being at rock bottom, losing the future husband, losing the future degree, losing the future job all around the same time and putting me on my butt at rock bottom that made me go, okay, I got to get crafty. I got to get resilient. I got to get creative. I got to, you know, I got to figure this out. Mm -hmm. And that built the business that I have. It led me to my now husband. It's led me to have this sort of story of where people like you ask me how I stay positive. And I'm like, I don't know if I did, but here's my advice. (laughs) You know, it's, it's, it's led to a lot of connections and things and just really amazing things that I probably wouldn't have had otherwise. Um, So I think that's what you've got to do. You've just got to look at it like, okay, is this the person that I want to be forever? And if the answer is no, then you've got to say, all right, how do I use this to move forward? I love that. No, and I think you make a great point that it's okay to not always have to put on a happy face, to smile, to be positive. We are allowed every now and again to just tap out and just cry and be sad and and just be away from the noise. And that's okay. But at some point, you do have to make a decision to get out of that funk and to do whatever you have to do and build a support system around you so that you can just use that as fuel to do amazing things and what you're meant to do. So I love how you give people permission to not always be positive when really bad things happen. Yeah. Yeah. I think you just, you have to allow your, allow yourself time, you know, like, Mm -hmm. I think there's like two groups of people. There's people who want to wallow in it forever and use it as an excuse. And then there's people who are like, oh my gosh, why am I crying about like, I instantly have to push this down and move on to something else. And I think it's okay to be both. Like give yourself the time that you need, but then realize that that can't last forever. And you do have to move forward at some point. I love that. And so similar to myself, when I started wedding planning, it, took off like a roller coaster ride and you made a point to say, oh, maybe I should go back and do all the things, get the business license, LLC and all of that. Um, But looking back and when you think about where you started out, what do you wish you would have done differently jumping into entrepreneurship? Yeah. So there's probably a lot of things, like if I really could go back and redo it. But the one thing that I really feel like knowing what I know now, I would have done differently is I took, because I felt like I didn't know anything, you know, I was a new business owner and I'd never done this before. I took so much advice Mm. and I think advice is such an incredible thing. Like if you have people that you look up to or you follow on Instagram or whatever, that's great. Like we all need mentors, but I think when you start to, you know, you hop on Instagram and you're following like 2000 people and you take all of their advice Yes, (laughs) then it's like, you start to get, you know, not only conflicting advice, but then you just, you end up with that like shiny object sort of like, oh, hey squirrel kind of syndrome, you know, like it's, it's that thing like, oh, well this person said that I need this and okay, I'm going to do this, but okay, then this person said I'm going to do this. So now I need to figure out how to implement both of these things at the same time. And the reality is neither of them are going to work for you. And so I think that's the thing I would do differently is just pick a few people that I trust or that I relate to their story or that they've built the kind of business that I want to build Mm -hmm. and just sort of listen to them. And I've gotten really good at this now of, I will take in all the advice in the world. Like I listen to everybody, 
but it's because I know when to leave parts of it behind, you know? And that's what, anytime I go to speak to people, I'm always saying like, take the parts of my story, of my business, of my advice and take what works for you and use it, but let the rest fall away. Everything I say is not going to be for you. Everything I say is not going to be for everybody. And I'm okay with that. And so I've gotten really good at doing that in my own life now where I can learn from anybody and everybody, but I'm not going to take everything they say as, okay, I need to do this thing. And so I wish, I, I feel like I probably would have gotten to the point that I'm at a lot sooner and probably at this point been farther along than I even am and closer to where I want to be if I had just said, you know, yeah, I'm going to take people's advice. I'm going to learn from everybody, but I'm going to trust my gut and like stick with what works for me and what I know to be working, whether or not, you know, the gurus and the influencers say that it's the right thing to do, because in the end, it's your life and your business and you need to do things your way. And whether that's, you know, similar to what somebody else is doing or totally different, you got to find what works for you. And I wish that I had sort of figured that out sooner. I love how you make a great point to say, you can listen to what people have to say, but it's up to you to ultimately determine what fits for your particular business, what fits for where you currently are and where you want to go. And you just can't take everything um, to heart. And the biggest part of it is trust your gut, trust your instincts, and then just toss everything else to the side if it just doesn't fit. So that's, that's just awesome advice there. Yeah. I was on your Instagram page because I love following you and you have this <laughs> quote that says the most powerful tool you have is the belief that you can change your current situation. And I love that quote. And I was just curious to know, how does that resonate with you? Yeah. So it's, that's one of my favorite quotes. Um, I don't even know where I originally heard it. I just remember it was a couple of years back and I want to say maybe it was my dad that told me this, but I'm honestly not even sure. I just know I heard it somewhere, but I was going through something and I was like, this just sucks. Like I can't, I can't catch a break, you know, like it, and it wasn't even after everything I'd been through, you'd think that like little things wouldn't bother me, you know, but I was having one of those weeks that I think we've all had as business owners where it was just like, oh my gosh, you know, like I can't catch a break. Everything is going wrong. Every time I turn around, there's something new and it's just problem after problem after problem. And I was having one of those weeks and I was just whining and complaining about it, you know, on the phone. And I was like, I just, I don't know what to do. I can't catch a break. Like, gosh, I just want to quit. Like, this is ridiculous. And like I said, I think it was my dad was like, you know, I understand that it's, it's all going wrong and it's all crashing down and it's problem after problem, but within every challenge, within every problem that you face, there's only ever going to be one constant and it's you. Hmm. And I really love that. And that's kind of where that quote came from is just, you know, anytime you're going through something, you are the one constant in that challenge. And so if you are sitting there thinking, oh, I can't catch a break. Everything's going wrong. I just want to quit. I can't do anything right. You know, this is awful. Like, why does life have to be this way? Then it's only going to get worse because you're the constant that's that's making all of this happen. You know, you're the constant that's keeping it going. I'm not saying you brought on the problem, but you're keeping the problem around. You're keeping the problem in existence. And so if you take your belief that things are going to change, things are going to get better, that you can actually impact the situation. That's the greatest tool that you have at your disposal. Mm -hmm. It's the most effective thing that you have in your toolkit is just saying, you know what? I'm done. Like, it doesn't matter if everything is crashing around. I'm still here. I'm still standing. And for me, you know, you really hear that in my story of me going, Hey, I got to keep the lights on. And this is not the kind of life I want to live. Right. And so that's always sort of been uh, a thing in the back of my mind is every single time that something is going wrong, 
I'm like, I've been through worse. Like, you know, like, I mean, it's just not gonna bring, and I'm not saying I don't have bad days. I'm not saying I don't get frustrated because I absolutely do. We're all human and we all will. And you'll never master that to the point where you're 100% positive 100% of the time. But you do have to understand that at any given point, you can decide that things change. It doesn't matter what everything is doing around you. It doesn't matter what everybody else is doing. It doesn't matter what's going on. You get to change it just by saying, I'm done. I'm ready for a change. Absolutely. Absolutely. At any moment, you can walk away. You can step up. You can do whatever is needed to change the situation. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Great great advice. And speaking of advice, what's the best piece of advice that you've received over the years? Hmm. That's hard because I've gotten a lot of really good advice. Um, I feel like, I don't even know if you would really count this as like advice. It's more just something that somebody said to me, but, uh, my mom, just when I was going through all of that. And I remember, uh, I spent a few days on her couch. (laughs) Um, and I just remember her over and over and over and over again, telling me, uh, you're going to get through this. And that was something she always told me growing up. And I remember her saying it just constantly, but it didn't really ever resonate with me until, you know, my whole spiel happened. Uh, But being on her couch just for days, she was just like, you're going to get through this. You're going to get through this. You're going to get through this. And now that's like my life motto, you know, like Mm -hmm. every single time. And it's funny because my husband and I now are every single time something happens, we just look at each other and we're like, we'll get through this. And like, you can tell it's like that face, like, will we, we don't know, but, uh, we think we might. Yeah. Let's claim it. That is what yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. But I just, to me that I, like I said, I don't even know if you'd constitute it as advice, but it's the best advice that I've ever been given because it's just that kind of reminder that it literally does not, you could be going through the worst thing that has ever happened to you. Like you don't know of anybody that's ever faced anything worse. And the fact of the matter is that a week from now, it's going to be a little better. And a month from now, it's going to be a little better. And a couple of years from now, you're not going to be as upset about it as you are now. And it doesn't make it any less bad. It doesn't make it any less hard. It just is the reminder that, Hey, you're going to survive this. You're going to get through it. Yes. It's, um, you know, it's like that old uh, saying in, in the Bible and scripture, you know, where weeping may endure, but at the end of the day, um, you know, there's joy that comes in the morning, trouble doesn't last always. Yes. And when you're in it, it, it feels, it may not feel like it, but, you know, hopefully in the next couple of weeks and months, you know, we're in the season right now, as far as taping this, we're like still in this COVID situation. But I'm reminded when you say that, that things will not be as tricky to navigate as they are right now. This too shall pass. And so we just have to keep reminding ourselves of that along the way. Absolutely. Yes. And you've accomplished a lot. So I'm really curious to know what are you most proud of when you look at your empire and where where you're headed and everything that you've created so far? Hmm. I mean, what am I most proud of? I'm just proud of the fact that it exists, you know, like I, that's, I know that sounds kind of cheesy, but like, I just, every single time I tell this story and I look back and I'm like, Oh my gosh, like, look how far we've come, you know? And my husband and I just talk constantly about that, about like, can you believe like, this is where we were a couple of years ago. And Mm -hmm. this is where we were, you know, back when all this started. And, um, this is where we were when we had a wedding planning. Like we talk about that stuff all the time. And, And it's just crazy to see how far it's come. And I guess with that, it's just the community that has shown up because of the business that I've created. I think it's the part that I'm most proud of uh, and most excited about because it's just like, you know, with, I have a podcast and so we have people that listen to that and they, you know, share episodes and things. And I send out emails and get like replies to those emails where people are like, oh, this really helped me. And it's just those like little comments that you get every once in a while where you're like, hey, I'm actually doing something good. I'm making right. an impact in the world. And no matter how small you feel like that impact is on some days, it's still an impact. 
And to me, that's just the coolest part because I've always been that person that just really wanted to help people. And uh, that's always shown up in different ways. And so to get to say, Hey, I'm, you know, quote unquote, living my best life, you know, like I'm, I'm building this business that actually makes me happy and I'm excited to wake up in the mornings and, and it's also feeding my, my family and making me money. And, and on top of all of that, it's actually doing good and making an impact on somebody. And, and so that, that just to me is like the coolest part. Yes. Anytime you can find joy in your work and be your own boss, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing because a lot of people don't have that freedom. So yes. I know you're like me where you definitely don't take it for granted. Not at all. I love it. Yeah. As you know, on this show, we do not believe in the word balance. So I'm curious to know what is your definition? What is your definition of living well-rounded? Yeah. And I love that. I love that you're just like balances doesn't exist. Cause no. I, I believe that too. I don't think, I don't think it's something we should reach for. Um, for me, you know, the concept of being well-rounded kind of falls under three things. Are you happy? Are you healthy? And are you helping? Mm, uh, I love that. Yeah. I, I believe you need to be doing something that you love. You need to have that where you're excited to get up in the mornings and get to work. And you know, even if you, I mean, if you're not in business and like you work a corporate job or something, as long as you're happy doing it, that's all that matters. And then, you know, are you healthy? Are you taking care of yourself? Is that job wearing on you too much? Like, do you have time in your schedule to do the things that you love doing and, and relax and take care of yourself? And then are you helping other people? You know, it's just right back to what we were just saying about that impact on the world. And even if it's the slightest little impact, like I really believe if we all had the mindset that we wanted to help other people, the world would be a very different place. Absolutely. Um, and so I want to constantly be a part of that solution and not a part of the problem. So for me, those three things, definitely, if I can check those off, then I'm like, yeah, this is, this is absolutely a, a well-rounded life. That's amazing. I couldn't agree more with you. And I will definitely be quoting you with, are you happy, healthy, and helping? Because <laughs> that, that honestly sums up a lot of what we all should be striving to be happy, healthy, and then helping others, reaching back, pulling people up, lending a hand uh, where we can. And so I love how you made a point to, you know, touch on those three, three elements. And so what are you most looking forward to in this next season of your life? Oh, so many things. (laughs) Um, I have a lot of, a lot of stuff coming in the next couple of years that I'm really excited about, but for right now, uh, I have a group coaching program. It's the first time I'll ever be doing group coaching. So I'm That's super exciting. excited about that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Very excited. It's called the Money and Marketing Catalyst. So that'll be coming later this year. And I'm just really looking forward to uh, starting to get to do coaching and, and make that impact in sort of a, a larger setting with more people. Mm -hmm. Um, and then on the personal side, my husband and I are going to celebrate our five year anniversary in January. So I'm really excited about that. So exciting. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. That's awesome. I love that so much. So we're going to jump into the final segment of this show, which is our rapid fire. I can't even say that. (laughs) (laughs) The rapid fire segment. So are you ready? I am so ready. Let's do it. All right. So I'm going to ask you a few questions and your job is to answer as quickly as possible. So let's go. All right, Haley. So you're stuck on an island. What are three things that you're going to take with you? You must have, it can't be your husband or any person. So what three things are you you taking? I, first of all, have to have Dr. Pepper. I can't live without (laughs) it. I have one in my hand at all times. That must be my least favorite soda. Seriously. Really? Oh, it's my favorite. It's my favorite. I, hilarious. Yeah. I, I mean, I drink water. Don't get me wrong, but gosh, I need my Dr. Pepper. That I can't so survive funny. without it. Um, music would be my second thing. I, uh, I just, I need music, you know, like I have mm. to have my, my playlists and I need something to, to pump me up. And then my third thing 
would probably be sunscreen because if we're going to an island, then I am definitely <laughs> going to get burnt up. And so I, I am, I've got like the palest <laughs> skin ever. I walk out in the sun and already turn pink and my family makes fun of me all the time because we can't go to the beach without me just coming home looking like a tomato. So yeah, I don't have that problem. You know, <laughs> <all year. laughs> you're very fortunate. You're very fortunate. <laughs> I've been all year. So it's, it's good. You're probably one of the first people with that hasn't mentioned a phone. So that I could live without it. I really awesome. could. No, that's yeah. great. That's really good. So we know you love Dr. Pepper, but what is your favorite <laughs> food? Oh, this is hard because I'm actually a really picky eater. Oh, okay. Um, so I have like, unfortunately, very few things that I love. Oh, um, wow. <laughs> but I guess I would probably have to say my husband makes like his own little recipe of this fried chicken Mm. and it's it's better than anything you could get at any like restaurant or fast food place and it's just so good and so I'm constantly like hey babe do you want to make chicken tonight Mm. (laughs) so I'd probably have to say that but I'm super picky (laughs) I want chicken (laughs) yeah so you kind of touched on this one a little bit but when you were little and someone were to ask you what do you want to be when you grow up what was your answer Oh, it depends on at what age you asked me because it <laughs> changed regularly. Um, I think the thing, the thing I came back to most, and this is so, this is such a little kid answer. Um, but I really, really was just fascinated with space and the stars and I had a telescope growing up. My and, daughter right now. Yeah. yeah loved, <laughs> loved, had all the NASA shirts and all that. And so I wanted to be an astronaut. I was also a dancer growing up. So I wanted to be the first like ballerina in space. I did not know that was already a thing, but I wanted to do it. And that was my, my answer probably most often growing up. But, um, in my head that looked a lot different than, (laughs) than it really would have been, but yeah, it, it changed regularly for sure. So what's your ideal date night? Hmm. Um, we live near the beach, so it would probably definitely involve a walk on the beach at the end of the night and like looking up at the stars. Uh, me and my husband constantly like go out on our patio and I'll just like point out constellations to him and stuff. So I would say probably doing that, walking on the beach, just listening to the ocean. That would be perfect to me. That sounds like a dream right now. Yeah. (laughs) If you could meet anyone in the world, who would it be? So many people. Um, I would probably say if I could only pick one, Reese Witherspoon. I grew up watching all her movies and stuff and just love her. And I love what she does for like women in the film industry and stuff. And so, um, probably her, I think we would get along and she'd be really fun to hang out with. I feel like over the last few, maybe just a year, I've become a much bigger Reese Witherspoon fan because of her, um, what is it? Big Little Lies and yes. little fires everywhere. And then we watched Sweet Home Alabama when we were at in the Outer Banks. And it's just, I love her. I do. Yes. But and even I, more lately. Yeah. And I follow her book club now and it's just, there's so many things. And so I'm just a huge fan of hers. Oh, so talented. If you could learn any skill in the world, what would it be? Mm, this one's really hard. Um... <laughs> I just, I don't know. This feels like a lame answer, but (laughs) I, um, I wish I was like a better cook. I, I, that seems like a waste because I'm so picky. So I doubt I would eat it, but I mean, you might create some new things that you like and play around. Yeah. Yeah. I wish science and food. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I I wish I was better at that because I feel like if I were a better cook, maybe I wouldn't be as picky of an eater. And so Mm -hmm. my husband does most of our cooking. And I just wish that was something I was better at. So maybe I, I guess I'll go with that. That sounds good though. What's something on your bucket list? I really want to go to Italy. Like oh, really love, bad. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love Italy. It doesn't disappoint. And so I can't wait till you can make your way over there and eat all the, well, maybe I wasn't going to say eat all the things, but you're probably I will eat, to it. <laughs> yes, I will eat all of the Italian things. That okay. will happen for then sure. You're good. And there's good <laughs> wine, so you're good to go there. Exactly. And speaking of wine, because this, this is my answer, but what's your <laughs> guilty pleasure? <laughs> I love it. I love the Italian. Um, my guilty pleasure, I would have to say, I watch, there's a reality TV show called Big Brother. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and I have never missed an episode of the show. It's on season 22. I started watching it with my dad when I was six and yep. And I still watch the show and I get wildly into it. Like it's, (laughs) it's obnoxious to my family because they're like, okay, we don't care that much, but (laughs) I I love it. I, I know it's just like trash TV and Sometimes I don't we need care. it. We yeah, need I it. don't care. I love it so much. We need the light-hearted stuff in this crazy world we live in sometimes. So exactly. You exactly. are deserving of it. Have at it. <laughs> Haley, thank you for taking time out of your schedule to hang with me in our well rounders today. I just love your testimony on how you can turn what may seemingly be a setback into a setup for greatness. And so how can our well-rounders stay connected with you? Absolutely. And thank you for having me. Of course. Uh, They can check me out. Just everything is on my website. So they can follow along over there at HaleyLuckadoo.com. That's Haley with two eyes. And I'm on Instagram like all the time. I love Instagram. It's my favorite place to hang out. So you can follow along there, DM me. I'll definitely respond. And I'm just at HaleyLuckadoo. Awesome. And we're also going to link your information in the show notes and also about your group program that is coming out so that you guys can check it out because she has some amazing resources that you should definitely dive into. And like I said, I enjoy following along on Instagram as well. And lastly, if you guys enjoyed today's episode, leave us a review. Say hi over on the gram. I'm at Coach for Creatives. And again, she's at Haley Luckadoo. And we will give you a virtual hug and we will also show our appreciation. I will be back next week, friends, with another new episode that I am thrilled about. But until then, remember to stay safe, stay positive, and go live well-rounded. Bye. Friends, thanks for kicking it with us this week. Remember to subscribe so you're notified when a new episode airs. I'd love it if you leave us a review and share this goodness with your squad. Until next time, seek a well-rounded life and remember to focus on what matters most.